Good morning, sixth grade. Welcome to math class. We're ready for our lesson 11 today. If you're looking at your power up, the quiz that you always start with on the back side, make sure you get that quiz done first. And remember, on the back side is where we're going to work our example problems. So some of you are doing the quiz and you're not doing any example problems down here. Make sure you get your example problems that we're going to do today. We have four of them that we have to do from our assignment. That work gets shown here so you're practicing. So quiz, and then when we get to the examples here. On the front side, you're going to notice it's a new one. So I'm going to read these answers with you after you get it practice the first time. On the top, guys, you're taking improper's and you're turning into mixed numbers. That's a division problem. So the first one you do five inside the box, two outside the box. Remember, top in, bottom out. We divide, we get two and one half. On the bottom, it's the exact opposite. You have a mixed number, you're going to make them improper. We do that by multiplying the denominator times the whole number, add the numerator to it. So that first one would be 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3, it would be 3 over 2. Then you got your mental math and you got your challenge problem. So pause the video, make sure you get this all done if you haven't done it already, and then I'll be back and I will rattle the answers off with you for Power Up C for the first time because it's the first time we had it and work through the challenge problem with you. Okay, your answers run like this. On the top, I divide, I get 2 and 1 half. I divide, I get 1 and 3 fourths. I divide, I get 2 and 2 fifths. I divide, I get 3 and 1 third. I divide, I get 7 and 1 half. Next row, divide, 3. Divide, 1 and 3 eighths. This is a tricky one. I'm going to take 3 over 2 divided. That gives me 1 and 1 half, but I have to add it to the 2, so I get 3 and 1 half. I divide the improper, I get 1 and 1 fourth. I add it to the 4, I get 5 and 1 fourth. I divide 7 fourths, I get 1 and 3 fourths. I add it to the 3, I get 4 and 3 fourths. Okay? Not too often in your normal book will you guys get a mixed number that also has an improper. We just don't do that stuff. Next row, switching to improper's. Multiply and add, 3 over 2. Multiply and add, 8 over 3. Multiply and add, 15 over 4. Multiply and add, 5 over 2. Multiply and add, 20 over 3. Multi Next row, multiply and add, 11 over 4. Multiply and add, 10 over 3. Multiply and add, 9 over 2. Multiply and add, 15 over 8. And multiply and add, 25 over 2. You worked your A through H, and now we have problem solving. It says if there are 12 globes in a lorn and 4 lorns in a dort, then how many globes are in a half a dort? And you're going, I don't know what a glob, a lorn, or a dort is. I don't either, guys, but it doesn't matter. We just go with what they tell us. So here's what I wrote on the board. There are 12 grubs in one lorn, and there are 4 lorns in one dort. So if I know there's 12 in 1 and I have 4 of those, what do I have to do? I have to simply multiply that together. So 4 times 12 equals 48. Now I say there are 48 in a 1 dorm, but I only have a half of it. So that means I need to cut that in half. How do you cut that in half? That's the same thing as dividing by 2. So 2 goes into 4, 2. 2 goes into 8, 4. There are 25 grubs in a half of a dort. So it's kind of an algebra class question, guys, but it's teaching you just take what they tell you and put it into things. If you need to write out the words, great. And then it's just math logic to be able to solve that. Okay, you took your first test last Friday. You had the investigation before that where we got introduced to reducing fractions. Percent means 100. Of, we pounded that in our head. Of means multiply from last week. Today we're moving on and we're switching to word problems. We're going to have word problems all week this week. Um, taking what we have learned in the first 10 lessons and saying, okay, you know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Now let's make it real life. <laughs> real life is not a math problem written like this. Real life is a word problem. It's always word problems. I have to say, what do I need to do to solve it? And that's what we're going to do today. Make sure you have your yellow folder out so we can take notes into it. And we'll get rolling on lesson 11 on page 75. Here it goes. In this lesson, we will begin solving one-step word problems by writing and solving equations for the problems. To write an equation, it's helpful to understand the plot of the word problem. That's what they try to do, guys, in your problem solving on your power-ups. They always give you the little questions of it that goes, hey, do you understand it? Did you plan it? Did you solve it? And then, you know, do you check it? So that first two, understand and plan, is really the plot of the story. Problems of the same plot can be modeled with the same equation or formula. In this lesson, we'll consider two common plots. 
One common plot idea is word problems that is of combining. Here's an example. Albert had $12, Betty had $15, all together they had $27. Problems of all combining have an, have an addition thought problem. So we show it, you have some, you add some more to it, you get a total. They like to do it then with the letters of S plus M equals T. There are three numbers in this description. In a word problem, one of the numbers is unknown. To write an equation for a problem, we write the numbers we are given in the formula and use a letter to stand for the unknown number. If the total is unknown, we add the, to find the unknown number. If an add-in is unknown, then we're missing something in addition, we subtract the add-in from the sum to find the unknown add-in. Okay? So I wrote down the word combining. Combining is addition. Sum plus some more equals total. So on the line you write addition. Turning the page, we got one more thing to read. It says, although we sometimes use subtraction to solve a problem, it's important to recognize the word problems about combining that have addition thought patterns. We follow the four-step problem solving process when solving word problems. Okay, here we go. Number one, in the morning, the tripodometer in Mr. Chin's car read 47 miles. At the end of the day, the tripodometer read 114 miles. How many miles did Mr. Chin, Chin drive that day? Triple monitors, those little things that tell you how far your car is draw, driven. So you got a fancy word, odometer. In the morning, I started with 47 miles. I added some more miles to it to a total of 114 miles. Addition thought pattern. Missing an added in addition, I solved it through subtraction. So to solve this, I'm doing 114 minus 47. Borrow 14 minus 7 is 7, 10 minus 4 is 6. It's a word problem, guys. Word problems need labels, so make sure you have labels. He drove 67 miles that day. Notice the addition thought pattern solved with subtraction. Number two, the first scout troop encamped in the ravine. A second troop of 137 scouts joined them, making a total of 312 scouts. How many scouts were in the first troop? I don't know how many scouts were in the first troop. I know the second one showed up with 137 to give me a grand total of 312. Missing something in addition, solve this one through subtraction. Subtraction. 12 minus 7 is 5. Cross, borrow. 10 minus 3 is 7. 2 minus 1 is 1. Label because it's a word problem. 175 scouts were in the first group. On top of page 77, we now have our next type of word problems. It says another common idea in word problems is separating an amount into two parts. Often problems about separating involve something going away. Here's an example. Mr. Smith wrote a check to Mr. Rodriguez for $37.50. If $824 was available in Mr. Smith's account before he wrote the check, how much was available after he gave the check to Mr. Rodriguez? Problems about separating have a subtraction thought pattern that shows with this formula. I have a beginning amount, I subtract what went away, and then I have what remains. So beginning B minus A, what went away, equals R, what remains. In a word problem, one of the three numbers is unknown. To write an equation, we write the numbers that are given in the formula and use a letter to represent the unknown number. Then we find the unknown number and answer the questions in the problem. So guys, back to your notes, you have separating. That's a subtraction thought problem. So you write subtraction on that line. That's how we do um, separating problems. Couple quick notes here when it comes to bank accounts. If I deposit money, that's adding money to my account. If I'm writing checks or I'm withdrawing money, that's subtraction, that's going away. They're gonna to start to use those words with you a lot because that's real life vocabulary and you need to make sure you know that real life vocabulary if you don't know that already. Here goes example three. Tim baked four dozen muffins. He made a platter with some of the muffins and gave them away to the school bake sale. He had 32 muffins left, which he packed in freezer bags to store in the freezer. How many muffins did Tim give away to the bake sale? So you, I hope you caught the little added step to this. We call it one-step word problem. It says he has four dozen. Well, I have to do math to figure out what is four dozen. I know a dozen is 12, so four times 12 is 48. I had done that over here in my power-up for today. So he started with 48. He gave some away to the bake sale. He ended up with 32. I'm missing the second in subtraction. I still subtract. So we're reviewing way back to lesson two, keeping those patterns going to make sure we can do it. 
48 minus 32 is 16. He gave away 16 muffins to the bake sale. Turn the page on top of page 78. We have another word problem. It says this. The room was full of boxes when Sharon began. Then she shipped out 56 boxes. Only 88 were left. How many boxes were in the room when she began? I don't know how many boxes were in the room when she began. I do know she shipped out 56 and left 88. Missing the first in subtraction is an addition problem. And so I have 56 plus 88. And I add, I get 14. I carry the one, I get 14 again. She started with 144 boxes, shipped out 56, and it was 88. So guys, notice for four, I solved it with addition. Notice for three, I solved it with subtraction. Subtraction problems can be either one. The two addition problems we did were solved with subtraction, both of them. That's common. Most of the time, you'll be missing an add-in, and you'll have to know I need to subtract to find what I'm missing. All right, you got... A through F, if you would like to work a few of those things, some of those last ones, like E and F, where it says write a word problem, they're trying to teach you how to think like a math book and be able to say, hey, what would this look like to be able to solve a problem that way? It's good practice for us to get into, especially as we get into algebra and we find missing letters, to be able to have that practice. Awesome. Make sure you have your work shown on the back side and you got the quiz and everything done. You're good with those answers. We'll see you for uh, the math problems. All right, sixth grade, here we get going on problem set 11, working the math problems. You can see number one is circled, so we get rolling on number one. It reads like this. As the day of the festival drew near, there were 200,000 people in the city. If the usual population of the city was 85,000, how many visitors had come to the city? So my normal population is 85,000. Then I added some visitors to it, and it gave me a total of 200,000. Missing the added in addition, I solve it through subtraction. I want to make this problem a little bit easier for myself. I'm just going to subtract 200 minus 85. I know I need to add the 100,000, so I add my three zeros. Okay, cross out, cross out, boom. I bring down 10 minus 5 is 5, 9 minus 8 is 1, 1 minus nothing is 1. I have 115,000, don't forget your label. Sorry, I didn't leave room for myself. Visitors. Okay. So missing something in addition, solved it through subtraction. Number two, Sid returned from the store with $12.47. He had spent $98.03 on groceries. How much money did he have when he went to the store? So he had some money. He spent $98.03. What remained was $12.47. What did he start with? Missing the first in subtraction, I add them together. I'm going to cheat and make that an addition problem. I'm just going to add straight down. Uh, 3 and 7 is 10. Carry the 1. 1 and 4 is 5. Decimal point straight down. 2 is 10. 191 is 11. He, spent, he started with $110.50. Number 3 says exactly 17,926 runners began the 2004 Boston Marathon. If only 16,733 runners finished the marathon, how many dropped out along the way? What was the starting amount? 17,926. We lost some runners along the way. What remained at the end was 16,733. I'm missing the second. In subtraction, I still subtract. So I'm just going to move it over here. 17, 9, 26, minus 16, 7, 33. And I subtract. 6 minus 3 is 3. Borrow. 9, 1, 1, nothing. 1,193 runners dropped out of the race. Boston Marathon is probably the biggest marathon in the world, guys. And you have to run it super fast to be able to stay in it. Number five, arrange these numbers in order from least to greatest. So there's only one negative number, guys, that goes first. Then there's the one that's neither negative or positive, zero. Now I'm transitioning. A fraction is less than a whole number, so half to one. 
B, which of these numbers is not an integer? Remember, integers are whole numbers and they're opposites. So what's not a whole number? The half. No fractions or decimals are integers. Number six, a 35-inch ruler, ribbon, was cut into eight equal lengths. How long was each piece? Eight into 35 goes four times. That's 32. I subtract, I get three. This is what we worked on last week. Now I write that as a mixed number. Each piece is four and three-eighths inches long. The rest of it says, describe how the ribbon could be cut into eighths. Um, by dividing. That's how we did it. We divided into eights by division. Number nine, list the factors of 16. One, two, four and four, two and eight, one and 16. List the factors of 24. One, two, three, Four, their partners. Four goes with six, three goes with eight, two goes with 12, and one goes with 24. What factors are in both of those? One, two, four, eight. Glancing to make sure I didn't miss any. D, what is the GCF? That's the biggest one, eight. So they worked us through finding those common denominators from lesson six. Turn in the page in my math book, number 12. I have this problem. 4 times 9 times n equals 720. Dots mean multiply, so the first thing I'm going to do is do the 4 times 9. I now have 36 times n equals 720. Missing something in multiplication, I solve it through division. 720 inside the box, 36 out. That goes in there twice. That's 72. Gives me a 0. 36 goes into 0, 0 times. So my answer is 20. Don't forget that 0, guys, when you do your division. Turning your answer key over, number 17, I'm adding 1 and 5 ninths, sorry, 1 and 5 ninths plus 1 and 5 ninths. 5 plus 5 is 10, the 9 stay the same. 9 goes into here one time, I carry the 1 up, I have 1 left over. That's 1 and 1 ninth, 1, 2, 3, adding those together gives me a grand total of 3 and 1 ninths. Maybe you went to here and added this and got 2 and 10 ninths and then did, did your to simplify it. Any way you look at it, guys, you simplify to 3 and 1 ninths. Number 18, I'm multiplying fractions. 5 times 3, 5 thirds times 2 thirds. Multiply the tops. 10, multiply the bottoms. 9, well, that's the exact problem we just did, guys. 10 ninths equals 1 and 1 ninth. Number 21, number next to something in parentheses means multiplication. I'm going to take 149 times 30, add a 0 for the next row. 3 times 9 is 27, carry the 2, 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14, carry the 1 times 3 is, whoa. 1 times 3 is 3, plus 1 is 4. So I have 4, 4, 7, 0, 1, 2 decimal points. I have an answer of $44.70. 23. Once again, those dots mean multiply. So I have 5 ninths times 1 third times 1 half. The tops, 5 times 1 is 5 times 1 again is 5. The bottoms, I'm going to go this way. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 9 is 54. That's me using the commutative property of multiplication, guys, which I think is easier than doing 9 times 3 is 27, and 27 times 2 is 54. You can go in either order with multiplication. 24, I have something in parentheses. I need to do it first. So the first thing I have is 5 eighths plus 3 eighths minus 1 eighth, and this says do first. I'm going to subtract the tops, 2 eighths stay the same. Now I'm going to turn around and add it to this. 2 plus 5 is 7, 8 stay the same. Some of you might see this and say, I want to reduce that. Don't reduce, guys, so you can keep working with eighths. Okay, that's why they did that for you, so you had common denominators. So the answer for 24 was 7 eighths. 25, write 3 and 3 fourths as an improper fraction. 
multiply. 3 times 4 is 12. Add. Plus 3 is 15 over 4. B, write the reciprocal of that. Reciprocal means invert. Invert means flip it over. The numerator becomes the denominator. The denominator becomes the numerator. C, find the product of A and B. Well, guys, if you wanted to, you could do the math. And you'd get 60 over 60, which equals one whole. Or you remember the inverse property of multiplication. That came out of lesson 10. Any number times its reciprocal always equals one. So I didn't need to do this math if I remember the property. 27. What are the next four numbers in this sequence? They gave me one eighth. They gave me one fourth. They gave me three eighths. They gave me one half. Now, if I am good at unsimplifying, guys, this is one ace, this is two ace, this is three ace, this is four ace. So the next three numbers would be five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths, and eight eighths. Now we gotta write that correctly off your inch ruler would be five eighths. This reduces to three fourths. This is good, 7 ace and 8 ace reduces to 1 whole. So that's what they want to see. This is the key to recognizing the pattern. Um, the easy way to recognize that sequence would be using your inch ruler. They just skip the 16ths. And last is number 30. If n divided by m equals 7 ace, what is m divided by n equals? Well, guys, that is a division problem. N is 7, M is 8, M divided by 8. So what is the other way around? 8 divided by 7. Remember, switch the order in division, it's the reciprocal. They're